Hi, I'm Lasse. I'm here to present the paper A Probabilistic Approach to Reliability Analysis of District Heating Networks Incorporating Censoring, a Report of Implementation Experience. Now, breaks and leakages in district heating systems can cause losses of tens to hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of water yearly. Aside from water being expensive to replace, breaks in district heating pipes can decrease the supply to a level where consumers do not have access to the heat they require. These breaks themselves are expensive, uh, but preemptive replacement of pipes is costly both in terms of uh, money but also resources. So there is a need to determine the optimal time to replace pipes. And that's a question that you can answer using survival or reliability analysis. Now in this paper we have taken a survival, anal a survival model from the medical domain which has seen some uses in the engineering domain. Um, but this specific approach has never been used on district heating pipes before. Uh, the approach is called the Viable Proportional Hazard Model. Um, it, it's called Proportional Hazards because um, survival probability depends not only on time but also a set of covariates that can be employed to uh, explain relevant asset information such as material or maybe explaining what uh, environment a pipe lays in. And then the second thing uh, is that the model is adjusted for censoring. Now, censoring is a trick used in survival uh, modeling. Um, and yeah. so in survival data, survival time or time to failure is uh, typically unknown for a majority of observations. And what censoring is, is a method to represent that unknownness of the actual survival times. Uh, for instance, in uh, if you uh, you will typically in your survival data have a lot of uh, individuals that have not died yet. So you don't know the actual survival time of these informations, but you know um, um, sort of a minimum for each uh, individual, and that you would refer to as right censoring. Um, yeah, we uh, test this uh, or we apply this uh, viable proportional hazards model adjusted for censoring on a district heating system on Funen, uh, which supplies more than 100,000 uh, consumers and consists of approximately uh, 140,000 uh, pipes. Uh, the data set includes pipe specifications, soil conditions, engineered features, and of course the survival time of observations and uh, whether uh, they are censored and what type of censoring has been applied to them. Um, now, initial parameter estimates are, um, are achieved using a maximum likelihood estimation approach. Um, and afterwards, we have uh, sampled from the posterior density of the parameter distribution, of course, given the data, uh, using an algorithm called Metropolis Hastings uh, Random Walk. And that allows us to characterize a confidence interval um, around the prediction produced by the model. Um, and these are example predictions. We see on the left an at-risk uh, pipe and uh, to the right at least uh, or a, a not uh, very at-risk uh, pipe. When we apply the, uh, the model uh, to, to um, predict really um, the survival probabilities population-wide, then this is what we see. As here uh, shown as a series of uh, violin plots um, over time. Um, we see that uh, the majority of uh, district heating pipes are expected to live for more than 400 years. With And, and here, ex life ex expectancy is defined uh, and here in that in this context you can uh, define life expectancy as the time at which half the population have died now according to the danish district heating association uh, danish district heating networks have life expectancies between uh, 50 to 100 years this means that there is a large discrepancy uh, between the viable proportional hazards model 
uh, estimation of, of or estimated life um, and uh, some uh, uh, national uh, experts. So what causes this discrepancy and, and is it the model we can trust or yeah. Um, well, we investigated reasons that that the um, survival probability is overestimated, and and we found two uh, candidate explanations. Um, so one and the first and and um, we'd say most likely, and we'll argue for why that is. Um, but the most likely is that that the network is uh, relatively young with a vast majority of pipes being less than 40 years old uh, and this means that data does not represent all stages of, uh, the, of the pipe's life cycle. It's commonly acknowledged that assets experience an increase in failure rate at the end of their life cycle and this is not visible in the data. So if it's not represented in the data, it's not something the model can learn. It will not know that at some point uh, the failure rate increases which of course means that uh, deaths are underestimated and survival probability is overestimated. Uh, now this is one reason. The other reason is that this uh, maintenance record behind in, in this uh, case study only covers a period of, of five years. Um, this means that there are some uh, pipe, some failures of pipes um, preceding this uh, time period which are virtually unknown uh, and this um, uh, unknownness is not, you know, we can't represent this uh, or this is not represented in the data um, and this of course means that with, with fewer uh, breaks in the data uh, that also uh, leads to an overestimation of survival probability. Um, we try to uh, to resolve this imputation about missing observations uh, with a very crude uh, imputation technique uh, to artificially construct some missing observations and reduce the bias. And um, the result of that, uh, you can see on this uh, slide, that after we, uh, when we uh, do this imputation and uh, re- uh, uh, find the parameters of the of the model again. Uh, we see that uh, survival probability has reduced a bit, but not much. This means that imputation helps, but only to a limited degree, and it also indicates that these missing informations are probably not the, a major reason why we see this large discrepancy. This is supported by uh, in literature. Uh, we have uh, Legat uh, and Eisenbeis uh, that state uh, a short maintenance record of, uh, of 5 to 10 years give as good uh, results as long maintenance record records. This means that we could likely, that, that it's likely not the fact that we only have 5 years of, of data that's, uh, um, that leads to this overestimation of, of survival probability. Um, uh, and uh, and I should state that this literature that I'm I'm comparing against is uh, literature from uh, water distribution systems. Uh, another uh, uh, thing is that the general characteristics of uh, successful uh, and validated uh, applications of survival models in the water distribution domain is that uh, the survival data uh, covers. Uh, or in that survival data, at least parts of the piping networks are uh, old relative to the expected age. For instance, in the paper Water Network Assessment and Reliability Analysis by use of survival analysis, um, uh, a, a parts of, of the networks are is, is up to 50 years old and expected life uh, is only at, at 30 years. So this means that, that, that in these successful and validated applications, we see that all stages of the pipe's life cycle is represented in data. Um, so this is something to keep in mind when using these uh, survival models that, um, that, that you actually need to have a good uh, foundation in, in data. 
and um, that's all for me so thanks for listening